Welcome back. Well, we just rattled off our top FCS running backs in the Dakotas, and now to talk a little more about how we arrived at the list, the order, maybe who's missing from the list, we bring in the guys that voted, our Midco SN FCS experts, Brian Sean and Alex Heinert up in North Dakota, and here at Sioux Falls, Jay Elson. So, let's start off with this front runner, literally, literally. But Lance Dunn was the number one pick for three out of four on this panel. I'm not saying who didn't vote him number one. But Bishan, you're an NDSU guy. What separates him from the rest of this group that much? Well, I think he's just that combination of speed and power. You know, he's one of those guys that's 215 pounds. He breaks tackles. He's strong. He's got that low center of gravity. But he also has the speed to outrun you. I mean, when he gets in the clear, he's a tough guy to catch. And you can just see how he's built and how he has turned himself in to one of the great running backs that NDSU has had. Well, look at him put his foot in the ground, get his shoulders square. That's what good running backs do, and that's what Dunn does. He always keeps his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, gets up field, and then can hit the Jets and pull away. Now, good running backs look really, really good when they have great offensive lines in front of them, and Dunn has the luxury of having one of those really, really strong offensive lines, obviously, at North Dakota State with that power running game. Well, I mean, he's averaging 145 yards a game through two games, but granted, that is phenomenal. So let's move on. A guy that was on the top two for everyone's list came in at number two, John Santiago. So, Jay, he's the most decorated one on the list, but you put him second. So why is he second for you? Yeah, he is the most decorated. He's a two-time All-American already at this point in his career. He's had 13 100-yard games. So if you're, if you're voting solely on resume, I think John Santiago is probably the guy, but I look at this as a question of who is the best running back in the Dakotas right now. And there, I think he's just a slight step behind Don. I think he's off to a bit of a slow start by his standards anyway so far this season, just, just over 52 yards per game to this point. He is coming off his strongest showing of the year at South Dakota last Saturday in that blowout loss to the Coyotes. But I just think right now, if you're asking me that question right now, I'm going done over Santiago, but just by a little bit. It's not a runaway thing for me. Well, at the same time, Alex, you had Santiago at number one. Why'd you put him in front of Dunn? Well, again, nothing against Lance Dunn. And like Brian was talking about, 290 yards and five scores in two games is ridiculous. But John Santiago's total body of work, I just think, is significantly better than anybody else in this two-state area. John put up 1,500 yards in 11 games as a freshman, just under 1,000 last year as a sophomore in a timeshare. And even though he's not cracked the century mark in a game yet this season, like Jay was talking about, he is a two-time All-American, and it's going to click sooner or later. And I know end-of-the-season award voting gets kind of skewed sometimes, but he's the only running back in Big Sky history to be a first-team All-Conference selection as a freshman and as a sophomore. And I just think he's the most versatile back of anybody on this list. He's one of the Ration's best kick returners, and he's a factor in the passing game. Again, Dunn's a great player. A lot of these guys are really, really good. But John Santiago's career numbers and the threat that he carries every time he touches the football make him, to me, I, I just think that the choice here is your top running back in the Dakotas. Yeah, I mean, I've been really impressed with him. He's a guy that when you watch him play, it's like that guy has some wiggle to him. So very impressed. I think he's just getting started. But let's talk about USD's backs. We all know Mike Frederick, but Kai Henry got more attention from our panel. Why Kai Henry instead of Michael? I mean, Mike Frederick's got more yards. He's listed as number one on the depth chart. Are you guys basing it more on potential from what you saw Saturday? Bishan, you had him at number four, so kind of elaborate on that. Well, I, I think the one thing that stands out about Henry is for being a freshman, this kid's size and his speed already is pretty impressive. I and mean, he's a tough guy to bring down. That's the one thing we saw. You see him right there catching the ball out of the backfield. You know, that's one of those things as, as a young player to already have those sorts of skill sets and work that way, to me, is very, very impressive. And, and again, his strength, his power, he runs tough for a young guy. You know, that's, that's still pretty new to what's going on at the college level. And uh, I, I like guys that can run between the tackle. I think Henry's got a bright future at USD. Well, Jay, you had Michael Frederick on your list. Yeah, and I'm the only one. I was a little <laughs> bit surprised by that. And I, I like what Kai brings to the table. There's no question about that. I mean, and Brian's right. He's got a lot of power to him. Bob Nielsen told me just the other day that He's got more power than you would expect a guy of his age to have uh, already. I mean, physically, he's he's matured quicker than I think even USD expected him to. But Michael Frederick has a lot of the same qualities. Not as big 
Uh, probably a little bit faster, but he's really dedicated himself this this year since he knew he was going to be the number one guy going into the season. He's gotten a lot more, uh, a lot stronger in the lower body. He's breaking tackles that he wasn't breaking before. I think he's a better receiver right now mm -hmm. out of the backfield. That could change, but I, I, you know, just based on what I've seen to this point, I'm going to give the edge slightly again to the guy that's got a little bit more experience. I need to see a little bit more out of Kai to give him this kind of label right now. Yeah. Well, Alex, you got your first glimpse of Kai Henry in person on Saturday. So what do you think of him? I mean, he looks pretty good. I mean, it was uh, it was a pretty impressive performance, certainly against one of the best rush defenses in the country. But at the same time, I feel like I need to speak up for the two Brady's here that were on that list. I know you everybody do. would probably <laughs> take Kai Henry as a prospect over Brady Mangarelli from South Dakota State. But Mangarelli did finish second in the Valley in all-purpose yards last year, and there's something to be said for that. He's not had maybe the most prolific start to the season. I know Mikey Daniel is going to steal some carries. But the kid, again, has been one of the better running backs in this MVFC conference the last couple of seasons. And then there's UND's Brady Oliveira. Brady was an all-big sky pick last year despite splitting carries with Santiago all season. He went for double-digit touchdowns, 900 yards as a sophomore in 2016. Those are better numbers, by the way, than Lance Dunn last year. So to put Bruce Anderson and Kai Henry over these guys, I mean, I just feel like we're putting maybe a little bit too much stock in the opening month of the season slash what happened in Vermillion this past weekend. But, I, you know, that's Kai Henry's certainly the flavor right now, and he's got a great future, but a lot of great running backs, I think, that merit consideration. Well, you guys think, make a good point. It is the opening the, month. <laughs> I think the crazy, the crazy thing to me, though, with South Dakota and South Dakota State is the two leading rushers are the two quarterbacks in those two teams right now. I mean, you look at teams that run the ball, that's why I put a Bruce Anderson above. Had he not gotten hurt last year, I think he is – right in the upper echelon. He played as a true freshman. He's 218 pounds. You know, he rocked Eastern Washington for 160 yards in the ground. It's hard, like you said, to compare because especially with the North Dakota backs to the North Dakota State backs, they don't play in the same league schedule. You know, where's everybody going to be at the end of the year? That's what's tough to compare, but all these guys are extremely talented across the board. A lot of talent. Well, we might have to compare these guys mid-season or at the end of the year, see how they're doing. But thanks, guys, as always, for your great insight. So that's what our experts thought, but let's take a look at what you, the viewers, voted in our Twitter poll. 156 total votes. Jay's laughing over here. But fourth place was NDSU's Bruce Anderson at 9%. Third went to John Santiago of UND, 17%. Just two percentage points ahead at 19% was Lance Dunn. And bringing it home at a whopping 55%. The true freshman we just talked about. Kai Henry from USC. So thank you everyone for voting. When we come back, we'll chat some high school football and volleyball. A few top teams took their first L of the season. Jason and Eric gives us all the details on the new rankings. Stay right here.